Hello everybody, I'm a rainbow. Welcome to the suburbs update for Yeeps. I am actually moving right now, so I'm kind of in between things, so I can't do all the bells and whistles I normally do on my videos. The variables that they got and the operators that go along with them, I thought those were important to cover all by themselves. They're super cool. So I'm going to walk through that and try to explain what they all are. So let's jump in right now. To start with, the main one is the variable definition. And I will look at all of them, but this is the main one here. You notice it has a zero on it. This is an, this is an input right here. This is the input for uh, the operators, and I will explain what those are. And this is a reset on the back of that, um, simply enough. So I'm just going to put that together right, right there and show you the reset and then show you how this works just a little bit. All right. Now, this is the variable setter. So you get that and you pick a value and the value can actually be uh, quite large. So you can put in there and then when you press this, it transmits it to there. So you notice the variable definition is now 3,459. All right, and it was just that simple. Now, they work by color. So any of them that are the same color will have the same information. So if you have multiple of these and they're the same color, they will all have the same definition on them. For instance, right here, all right? And if one of these changes, all of them will change. So let's talk about the next thing, which is a clock pulse, all right? And what this does is it gives you a clock pulse, which is a timing pulse every second, all right, when it's on. But you see right now, this has an output and an input and you have to activate it. I'm just going to use power. And you see it start counting right there. And this is going every second. Now, let's direct our attention over here. We have a display which does not work because it only goes up to 99, but it also sees that number and it says, okay, this is how much it is in time. And you can see it counting up right there. All right. And it's super simple to reset it if you want. So I'm just going to press the button. You notice it all resets to zero and starts counting again. Now I will show you some more about the clocks in just a minute. Okay. Because they will actually some more in interesting stuff there, but let's go ahead and look at the rest of these. Now you've already seen the variable setter. There's a variable randomizer here as well. And what this does is you define the two values that you want it to be between. So you want it a low value and a high value. And we'll stick with the 100 and 999. We'll go with that too. All right. So when we, when we press this, this is going to set the variable right there. So it picked a random number, 7950, and if you look, you can see it's displayed as a time as well. So these can all tie together and how do you use them? All right. So I've explained the variable definition, I think. Now let me explain what the operators are. And that's on this side right here. So this is the greater than symbol. You should be familiar with this from your math. But if you can't remember it, it always eats the bigger number. So think about that. So five is greater than four. Eight is greater than seven. That's how that works. Always eats the bigger number. Brings us to less than. All right. It always eats the bigger number. So five is less than six. Ten is less than 20. There you go. Right there, guys. Variable equals. You guys all know what this means. They equal each other and variable is greatest. Now, this has to be used with other is greatest. So you, it's basically a comparator between different uh, numbers. And I'll show you how that works a little more um, after this. All right, so to start with, so we're going to start this to see if the number is bigger or smaller. All right, so we're just going to pick a value of one. Rather large right there. All right, and I'm 
you gonna set that oops we're gonna set that to zero all right you notice this is no longer lit up because zero is not greater than anything okay um, that's you can't get any smaller than that all right so if we set it to something else something simple like 10 you notice all right 10 is not greater than 1278 I hope you're following along with me now one more time and let's go with Notice I can go all the way up to five digits on that. So I went up high, that's illuminated. So that is how the operators work, greater than, less than. All right, so let me get rid of this. Let's do a less than. And let's say it has to be less than four. Notice it's not lit up right now. We're gonna go, there we go. Now it's lit up, okay? That's as simple as that gets right there. And you, remember, you can reset it if you have an input and you can use these remotely with any of the wiring things. I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can for you right there, all right? So you can also have this count up by yourself if you want to, but if you're trying to do that, you know, it's, it's going to take a long time. So I would use the variable setter. All right. Now let's do equal. You notice it's not lit up because two is not equal to 34, which is what we put in there. So let's go. Still not there. There, it's equal. So it's the exact number. That is how the variable definition and the operators work. All right, now let's deal with is greatest. And I've got to thank Loaf um, from the Yeeps Discord. Uh, I actually took his definition that he put in the Discord last night. I'm going to put this in the description so people can read it. I think it's very easy to follow and uh, saved me a lot of time. So there, I'm going to give that credit to Loaf. But I will show you how the is greatest works. So you notice right now we've got this light uh, blue or aqua color right here. All right, and... It is actually lit up, if you look at the other one right there. But I'm going to show you how is greatest works. All right, you remember when I said is greatest works by color. So you have to have at least two. That's right, you've got to have at least two different colors with is greatest for it to be functional. And right now, I've just got these hooked up to lights, and they're not bigger than the other color. But if I do this, all right. I'm setting this manually, still not greater than. Now, two is what I have set on the other one. You notice this is now tied for is greatest. So it is possible to have two that are tied. So notice they're all, every color that I have in here is at least two. So, but when I advance this one, you notice the other two go off, yellow stays on. And you might say, what am I going to use this for, Rainbow? If you've got two teams and you have a timer running at the end of time and you want to know who, who has the biggest, highest score, this would tell you right there. So super easy to do. One of the things I love about this update is the basketballs, they're kind of cool. I like to play basketball. One of the few things I can still do. And now I can dunk again. <laughs> but right now, the hoop, if you put it through there, it has an output, which I have going in to the uh, variable definition right there. So three. Now, whoops. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, off the rim. There we go. All right, and so you can see that that works that way. I have the same one with the football, and I like the football. Now, you can just throw this, and it will keep track of it. So, and if you look, you can see the big tractors over there. The other cool thing about football, as I noticed, is um, if you run under the goalpost, nothing happens. So if you actually want to play where somebody has to get the ball across the line, have them jump through. All right, I said I'd talk about the clock pulses some more. This is actually a clock that counts up. All right, once you set it, and I have it set for 60 seconds right now, which is a minute. And when I reset it, it uses the less than with the clock pulse. And when I reset it to zero, I have it set for 60. So this will keep going until it hits 60, then it will stop. Conversely, all right, and you notice it's going in on this side of the variable definition. Now, on the other hand, I have a counter, okay, or a timer that will count up. It is going in on this side, also uses the clock pulse with greater than. Now, you notice it is counting down, all right? So you have two different clocks that you can have, one that counts up and one that counts down. Or you could have a counter, okay, that counts up or counts down. And I didn't wanna make this too complicated, but you can also use the equal sign. So when it's equal to a certain time, it will stop or a certain number. All right, to tie all this whole thing together, I wanted to show you that you can do multiple operations at the same time with the same variable. So right now we're set for zero, greater than is greater than 10, Less than is less than 20. And equal to is 15. So you can create a complex thing that satisfies different requirements at any time. So right now, let's make this an 11. 11, okay? Greater than 10, less than 20, not equal to anything. If I make, oops. If I make this 15, notice I satisfy all the requirements right there. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that you don't have to do these one at a time. You can combine them however you need to. So just think about that. All right, everybody. I'm a rainbow. I hope you get, this all works for you. Y'all be good. Bye now.